So when I was a kid, uh, my father would bring home the New York Post, and I would want to see how the stock market did. Both my parents were CPAs, so there was a lot of numbers going around. So I graduated college as a uh, math major. I was uh, unemployable. I went to Las Vegas and played poker for a year and a half. And then I uh, interviewed for a job at a uh, major Wall Street firm whose name won't be mentioned here. And the head of options asked me a question. I said, oh, that's a really bad question. If you're asking me that question, you really don't understand anything about options. Let me explain it to you. And uh, remarkably enough, I didn't get the job. I moved to Philadelphia and started trading as an independent options trader on the floor in May of 1981. Sometimes I can find myself at a racetrack literally trying to make $2 on an idea that I have. People are trying to get the odds in their favor with the slightest bit of edges. But in the options market in those days, the markets were much, much wider. So I realized, whoa, this is very lucrative. But once I started trading and making money, uh, my friends were scattered around in college who we played poker with. And I called them and said, this game's unbelievable. Come on down down to Philadelphia. I'll train you up and uh, we'll get going. We worked uh, hard to make sure that if you came to work for us, uh, you would be rewarded. We have no product. We're not Coca-Cola. We don't have anything. The only thing we have is the ability to hire smart kids out of college who are motivated and to teach them how to trade. So there's a culture of everyone speaking the same language, which is basically the language of probability and expectancy. And there's a, a culture of open-mindedness that if you have the best argument, you win. And even if you're the youngest guy or the youngest girl on the desk, if you're right, you're right, and we don't care about anything else. That culture has permeated the place, I hope, and uh, I certainly hope it continues.